Hello, and welcome to another Synth Soundset walkthrough with me, The Unfinished. It's been a while. I keep saying that at the moment because it keeps being a while between them. Um, but anyway, it has been a while. Over here, we have Serum. Ooh, yes, haven't done a sound set for Serum before. This is my first foray into X for Serum's Digital Wonderland. And those of you who are very eagle-eyed might have noticed that this is not the regular skin. It isn't, is it? No, this is one I have made. Now, um, I was looking at, I was looking for skins for Serum because whilst I like the layout of it. I, aesthetically, it's not terribly pleasing to look at. And I was looking for something to replace the default skin and didn't really find anything I particularly liked. But then I stumbled across a Photoshop package by um, a company called Audio Animals, which basically allowed you to create your own skin if you've got you know enough Photoshop skills to, to work with their templates. And, um, and so this is what I came up with. Um, it's a nice sort of clean, dark blue with little hints of green and grey in there and a nice subtle um, pale yellow, which is actually based on the colour scheme of a Spanish Football League programme that I watch. Um, they have quite nice graphics in between each game and I thought, yeah, let's try that colour scheme out. And I think it's worked. I like it. And if you buy Serum Alpha, you'll get to like it too because it comes free with it. Well, of course it comes free. I'm going to charge it for a minute. Um, there's also a second one, which is based on the cover artwork for Serum. Um, here it is. Um, Serum Alpha, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so there's, there's sort of bubbles and interesting... I um, can't remember the name of these things. Polygony type stuff. Has an X in it. Can't remember. Waffling. Um, but we'll go back to uh, the skin, uh, the clean skin that I like, um, which I've been using ever since I invented it. Invented it. <laughs> Don't oversell. <laughs> Invented it. Designed it, created it, whatever. Uh, so Serum Alpha, yes, let's talk about that. So it's my first foray into um, doing a Serum sound set, as I mentioned. Um, it hasn't got a sort of specific theme, not one that I started out with. It's um, essentially just me trying to make some cool cinematic sounds with this synth and seeing where that took me. Um, I was listening to a bunch of soundtracks by the likes of Lorne Balf and Junkie XL, Ludwig Gollinson, um, Brian Tyler, but also some new albums and uh, stuff by my my favourite band in the whole world, Hybrid, um, Hyper, Fotech, The Bug, things like that. So there's a, there's a bit of there's there's sort of modern um, cinematic stuff in there, but there's also a little bit of a a breaks beat drum and bass kind of thing coming in there, creating a nice sort of meld in the middle somewhere that creates a unique, hopefully, um, collection of new noises for you to play with. So let's jump in with the the, the bass lines and uh, see if we like it, shall we? It's a nice and gritty bit of distortion in there, modern you know, action, that sort of thing. And that's that's where we're, we're sitting with this. Um, we've got um, got a few controls. Mod wheel. Calms things down a bit. Yeah. And then we've got the macros at the side, which are good fun on, on Sierra. And they're really quite easy to program. And they give you just a nice access to really simple stuff. So if we just use this in it straight away as an example, so closing the filter. switch to the FX page, we'll see the distortion moving up over there, uh, reverb, and then the noise factor. So you can make it more percussive if you wish. Anyway, so that's that's our first patch. Let's carry on, shall we? Oh, we haven't fiddled with that, so it thinks I'm trying to change it. darkness, a contemporaneous, that's a word, but hopefully just a nice sort of collection of interesting sounds that you'll find useful. Some more basic stuff like this, because sometimes you don't want it to be really super complicated. Quality 
key to the um, bass sounds in particular because you've got you've got an array of noise doodars over here. Ooh, that's what I wanted to do. And you've also got um, loads of envelopes. I think you can have up to eight envelopes and uh, sorry, LFO, sorry, um, but they can also, if you click this button, they can act as envelopes rather than uh, low frequency oscillators, which also gives you huge amounts of control. It's quite noisy, quite noisy that one. There's a little bit sort of of um, where the cinematic meets the dance floor. Which is probably slightly inspired by the fact that, you know, I like Serum as a digital synth, but I quite like using it like a, a a classic um, virtual analog hardware synth. So you're looking at something like um, the Axis Virus, the uh, the Roland JP8000, the Nord Leads, that kind of thing. Ooh. Just let it do its thing, Matthew. <laughs> So yes, the LFOs you can draw in all sorts of shapes and stuff. So it, it kind of works like the multi-stage envelopes that you get in, in Zebra and some other synths. Some nice aggression there. So it does have a very modern feel, and I think you can push it, uh, you push it in places that, because when it first came out, I remember everyone saying it was like, oh, it's the massive killer. Everyone had been waiting for massive to update, and it never did. But well, it kind of has now. But you know, we won't, we're not going to Massive X now because um, it's a great synth with some absolute terrible cockups in it. Um, but Serum um, was announced as. Not, well, Exford didn't announce it as such, but people would say, oh, this is it, this is Massive. Um, this is what Massive should have become. And I think they're right. Well, I do like what Massive X does. I think Massive X in its own right is a great synth. But it feels, without wishing to uh, labour the pun, unfinished. I know, I know. All right. Faces. A bit of 80s house there with that little pattern. Oh, that's some dirty stuff in the in the module there. Great for basses. I mean, there are a lot of bass lines and basses in this sound set, and that's just because it does it well. And Serum has initially, do you know, for a long time, and the reason it's taken, was it three or four years for me to actually do a Serum sound set, is that at first I didn't get on with it. And I don't know why. I honestly couldn't tell you why, because now I love it. So I don't really understand why why I didn't really enjoy it at first. And um, yeah, couldn't tell you. But it is great. And I do love it, and I'm glad that um, I got into it because it's now in my. I have, I would say, 99% of um, the synth work I use in my my own tracks is 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 done with three synths, and Serum is now one of those three synths. Bet you're wondering what the other two are now, aren't you? <laughs> it's Zebra and Repro if you're interested. Be 
and bass. I love, the, I like, I, I love, no, I can say it. I love the clarity of sound you get in Serum. It's, it's got a lovely clear sound. Even when you push huge amounts of um, distortion at it, it still sounds clear. And that's something I had wanted for a, from a synth for a while. That's one of my favorite sounds, that one. I actually created that sound very specifically for a project where I was doing a uh, a breakbeat remix of a really cool um, game theme, which uh, it looks like now we'll never see the light of day. Oh, so sad. Um, but these things happen. But I got a good sound out of it, so that's something. Uh, yeah, so it's really worth um, listening to this on some decent speakers or headphones, because. Um, you won't hear that clarity of sound properly on your on, if you're watching this on your phone. Or your little earbuds. Especially the basses. Bit of drum and bass there for sure. And I like that, yeah, one of the reasons I think I like the virtual analog vibe of, of Serum is because um, I've been, I have been enjoying some of uh, Ludwig Göransson's stuff. I was watching The Mandalorian, um, I finally got around to watching that a couple of months back and uh, very cool, isn't it? It's good. Um, and his music's, it's here and there and all over the place, but in a really fun way. Um, and there are moments where he, he has these synthy sounds, which really sort of made me think, ah, oh, has he got an access virus or something in the studio? Because it has that kind of feel, it has that virtual analog feel. <laughs> Holy moly. <laughs> Ouch, like it. Uh, I think we're getting towards the wrong V, so we must be getting towards the end of the bass here. That's very nice. And so after basses, we've got a couple of drums, um, some sort of drum hit impact kind of things. Nice and big, but also very sort of synthy and digital. And then what have we got here? Nice. Um, you can do some great drum sounds with this because you have got a collection of noise filtery types, um, noise filter noise um, waveforms and obviously you can create your own. In fact, I think technically, because you can control them chromatically here, um, I think you could probably use this almost like a sampler. You could like put a piano sample in there and try and play it. I mean, very, very old school, like the old classic um, in Sonic and, and Roland and Yamaha samplers of sort of the late 80s, early 90s kind of vibe. But you know, some people still dig that, right? Yeah. Well, I'm one of the people that still digs that, so yeah. So you could do that. Um, and of course you can make your own waveforms here. Um, I have, um, I did actually make a waveform out of my, uh, oh yeah, well, sure, I can show you now, can't I? I can um, it's just, uh, it's not in here, use it, you titty. Um, yeah, the unfinished logo. It's a bit boring there, doesn't it? Um, and then we look at it, and this, you can't really see it, let's sweep through it, shall we? Whee, look, it's the unfinished logo. It's not terribly clear there. <laughs> uh, you can probably just about make it out. Uh, was that worth it? I don't think it was. Sorry about that, wasted your time there. Uh, keys, yes. Keys. It's obviously very electronic. sort of distortion on there. Uh, 
Now look here, we're just using the sub. No oscillators. And on we go to the lead, so... Kind of strange, almost vocal kind of thing there. Again, I haven't done many leads. I'm, I don't write that way, so I don't end up really sort of making them for myself. But for those of you that have spotted, there are actually some other sound sets here. Uh, when I started making Serum Alpha, I created a sort of... I had a bunch of sounds that were going in a particular direction. Um, by hook or by crook, that was what was happening. And um, But I was also making lots of other sounds at the same time that didn't feel like they were part of it. And I've kind of pushed them into other folders. So we've got the beginnings. Um, in, in some in some cases, almost the the endings of some other sound sets. Uh, so there is a there is um, in Serum Nova in particular. There's quite a few. Uh, there's more lead sounds because that's um, that's a kind of cyberpunky thing I'm working on. So if you're interested in a cyberpunky sound set, comment below and push me towards releasing that one because oh, uh, I, I don't need to do much to that one to finish it actually apart from maybe just program the macros. Um, and Serum Catla is one which is um, just a lot of really aggressive sounds. It's really distorted and noisy and aggressive and in your face. Um, so that's where that one's going at the moment. Things change, we don't know. But, you know, if either of those two sound like something you'd like, then do let me know. Loops, drum loops. There's only a handful of these, which is a shame, really, actually, because you, you can do some really good stuff. I actually think um, there's a lot of scope for good drum loops and drum sounds with this. With Obviously, you've got the noise um, wavetables, you've got... Uh, and the regular ones, you can, you can make kicks and uh, snares and hats and all sorts of things. Well, you know what drum sounds are, I don't need to tell you that. Perhaps I should have included some more, we'll see. I have made some more and I've, I've split them across some of the other sound sets, but um, yeah, so there will definitely be more of those in the future because there should be. Uh, I'm making that promise to myself now. <laughs> okay, so pads. This is the, the subtler aspect of Serum Alpha. We've had all the noise from the uh, the bass, the big bass end. Um, so now we're providing that moment of calm. But I have still tried to push it in a few interesting directions to make it that little bit more cinematic, so it's not all too, you know, try to avoid anything particularly vanilla. So as ever, there's, there's a few pads, but actually probably for me, probably not as many as usual. You know, there are some satin sets I make that end up being about 50% pads, but not this one. I 
have intended to put some movement in all of them where possible. And because Serum's so very good at creating movement, you, you kind of, you almost feel that like you have to. It's got a long tail, this one. Anyway. Really, you have with you know eight potential LFOs and you know or envelopes depending on how you how you deal with them. You know, there's so much potential for for movement. You, you know, you'd be you'd be cheating yourself if you didn't put it in there. It could be subtle or it could be alarming, but you know, something. I have a little secret to let you into. I've already done this video once and I completely forgot to activate my screen capture software. So there's going to be moments where I'm going about to tell you something and I won't know whether I've told it you already in this video or I mentioned it in the previous one. So if I repeat myself at any point, um, sorry about that. That's another one of those patches where you can really feel the the clarity of serum sound. Of course, the fun thing, when you've created a patch where there's lots of movement, you can just basically say, well, maybe that's a bit fast for me, shall I? Uh... Slow it all down. And if we look at the other FO1, it's controlling the wavetable positions. Go back here, so you can see it's subtly moving here and there. And 
instantly we've given the the sound a completely different well not completely different but fairly different flavor okay sound cloud sound cloud oh my god <laughs> soundscape sound cloud uh subliminal advertising there Pulsing soundscape, that one. As if I'd give SoundCloud bloody advertising. Pain in the asses. So obviously on other sound sets for synths that I like working with, like um, Zebra and Repro and uh, Omnisphere, try to go for more of a sort of organic side of things when it comes to the escapes. And here you don't really have that option, so we're we're... We're trying to make digital sound unusual, but cinematic as well. And, you know, a bit of pitch shifting always works in those ways. So again, we're actually introducing a sort of a layer of um, subtlety with the soundscapes because they're sort of atmospheric and, and tense as opposed to being anything in your face. So they work quite well with the pads. Then we've got six LFOs <laughs> activated here. But there is also some basses. Actually, this has got quite a nice sort of harmonic element, hasn't it? As you can see, we've pitched it so that alongside the sub, it's kind of playing a chord. It's quite a nice effect. Are we getting towards the end? Uh, nearly, nearly. Mm. So there we go, a world of digital soundscapes. Uh, now on to the sound effects section. Now, normally I wouldn't do very much in the way of sound effects. Um, traditionally, in my sound sets, I haven't really done that because I always think, you know, there's some really nice um, sound effect sample libraries out there already. You don't really need necessarily much of that from uh, from what I'm trying to do. But but with Serum, I just found it easy to make them and so did. Uh, and I think they do add something. So let's have a little listen. Some of them, some of them are huge and some of them are subtle. That's probably somewhere in between that one, isn't it? But they're good for atmosphere, whether it's for an action scene or something tension. You know, they can play both ways. You can, they're probably quite good for trailer music as well, actually. Down, drop a kick. Uh, there's a fair amount of distortion on most of them as well. <laughs> Thank you. 
And one of the advantages of actually having something like sound effects in a sound set rather than a sample library is that you can actually come in, you can poke about, and you can fiddle with them. I mean, obviously with um, the macros that are already there in the mod wheel, just got five things happening on the mod wheel. Ooh, what have we got on there? Shows you. So we've got sub oscillator level, filter cutoff, equalizer, and the distortion. Well, there you go. See? Um, but you know, you could change the oscillators to create completely different sounds. You can bring in a noise oscillator, you can change the envelope shapes or times, and instantly you've got um, a brand new sound effect to play with. You know, you could slow that right down, or you could speed it up even more to make it more percussive. And then, oh, I think this is quite a loud one, so prepare yourself. Yeah, they haven't entirely gone out of fashion yet, have they, the, the old Brahms? Um, so and then now we're on to the sequence section. So again, using the, um, the charming uh, LFOs and envelopes. and everything going along there. It needs to be a slightly higher tempo, that one. Should we see what the module does on that? We haven't touched the module for a while. Kind of messy. <laughs> I don't think I need to tell you what this is uh, inspired by. You know. That whole score does seem to be a kind of a, a Marmite score. And people either love it or hate it. I, I like it. I think, I think there's some really fun stuff in it. And again, it's got that sort of virtual analog synthiness in it that, that appeals to me. So we're fiddling with the pitch to it, add some tension here. Well, actually, no, I'm going to play this one because I, I really like this one. This is one of my favourite patches. No, I'm confusing it with something else. <laughs> no, I do like that one. <laughs> I do like that one, but I thought it was something else. Oh, I see, again, I've done that thing where I haven't played with these sounds for a while before doing the walkthrough video and I've slightly forgotten. Tit. I was supposed to be playing chords with something. Ah, this is this is the one. You see, it's, it had cut. It had the word cut in it, which was very confusing for me. This is my favourite patch, probably in the whole thing. I love how fun that is. And you know, again, that's just you know using all the the different uh, LFOs. The, drawable air foes and stuff to control different things in different ways. I, mean, I could have put that in a more interesting way, but sorry. Alright, so getting towards.
towards the end of the sequences, I suspect. The tonal tension. Right, and now we're into the last section, the synths, which is, as ever, something that didn't fit into any other category. Is it pitch shifting up? Is it pitch shifting down? I don't know. <laughs> and then finally, finally, we're going to play Supermoon. So there you have it. My first uh, serum sound set, and uh, I'm, I'm fairly confident it's going to be the first of many, or at least some. Uh, <laughs> my confidence failed pretty sh sharply there, didn't it? Um, but yeah, serum's great. I, I've, I've really got into it since I, I was technically forced to start using it, and um, I think having created my own skin for it's helped as well. But uh, yeah, it's it's got a nice sort of rough but clear modern edge to it that I'm... <laughs> yeah, I just like it. I like it. It, it provides different tones to what uh, the synths that are more commonly using. So if you don't have Serum, then I do suggest going out and getting it because um, it does provide a really good um, complement to, you know, the synths that... Many of us are using Zebra and Omnisphere and you know, the other Yuhi stuff as well, of course. But I do think it's um, it's it's got a it's got a nice compact, clear vibe to it that I think is very very useful. It's just a really useful tool to have in your toolkit, synth wise. Um, which left Bono trapped in the chest freezer, covered in his own vomit, which meant that we were left to have to play the second half against Aberdeen without him. Anyway, um, yeah, so anyway, I've waffled on too much. That's the end of the video. Um, Serum Alpha, I hope you've enjoyed it, and it will be out very soon for £19.99 plus VAT. And of course, there'll be a discount if you're a newsletter subscriber. Okay, well, ta-ta, I'll see you again soon. Um, Zebra Soundset, hopefully, coming up before Christmas. Bye-bye.